Network Access Enforcement Options in Windows Server 2012. In this micro nugget, I'm going to outline the five main options you have for enforcing healthy clients and servers on your network when you're using Windows Server 2012. Network access protection is designed to control who can get on your network and what bits of your network they can get onto based on their health situation. Now their health might include rules about whether they've got a firewall enabled, whether or not they have up-to-date antivirus or, or maybe anti-spyware software, uh, whether or not they are completely patched, and that might be critical patches, important patches, you get to decide the level. If someone is healthy, it can get to your entire network and all of its resources. If they're not healthy, you might want to give them access to a restricted portion of your network called the remediation portion. And that would just be a subnet that gives them basic network services like DNS, as well as the ability to get to resources to bring themselves into compliance, such as a Windows update server or a server that can issue them an antivirus or anti-spyware update, something like that. There's really five enforcement methods for this. The first enforcement method is easy to explain. It's none. You're still collecting information on who's healthy and who's not. You're just not doing anything about it. It's good for reporting purposes. After that, you've got DHCP enforcement, VPN enforcement, 802.1x enforcement, and IP security or IPsec enforcement. Now, there are really four different ways that you can set up NAP to enforce your policies. In other words, how you control access to your network. There's IPsec, 802.1x, VPN, and DHCP. The one you use is gonna kinda depend on your goals. For example, if your goal is merely to keep your computers updated all the time, IPsec is a good one. In fact, the IPsec enforcement method is good for pretty much everything. 802.1x is, is pretty good for keeping your computers updated. It's okay for protecting your roaming laptop computers. It's excellent at protecting your corporate headquarters or a branch office from non-compliant computers. It's, 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 it's pretty good at, at, well, we'll put a check mark there. I'd say it's better than pretty good. It's very good at managing internal risk. Excellent at tracking security compliance. Not so good at protecting remote access, and very good at protecting your corporate assets from unmanaged computers. The VPN enforcement design is excellent for remote access and protecting your assets, but merely good for everything else. And we are gonna talk about all these enforcement methods, by the way. Uh, DHCP, not good for protecting your corporate assets, not applicable to protecting remote, um, it's also, when it comes to protecting your corporate headquarters from non-compliance, not very good at that. And it's just good at everything else, but it's really easy to set up. So we are going to talk about each one of those four different models, because this is the real design decision is which enforcement model do you use? For the DHCP enforcement mechanism, you have to be running a Microsoft DHCP server. Essentially, when your clients attempt to get an IP address, the DHCP server, which has to be running the network policy server role, will either have policies configured there or it can check with another NPS server on the network. If the client is healthy, they get an address. If not, they might get an address that only lets them to the restricted portion of the network. Now, this won't stop someone from manually configuring a static IP address, so it's not super strong protection. And it's designed mainly for clients that are connecting to your LAN, although it's certainly possible to work that into a remote client connection as well. Now, speaking of remote clients, you can also use the VPN method, which relies on a Microsoft RRAS server running the NPS role, although it can talk to a network policy server to actually see if clients are healthy. Now, there's no way around this. A client has to be healthy in order to get in. And if they're not healthy, you could still allow them, again, just to the remediation portion of your network. But this technique doesn't do anything for clients that are connecting in some other fashion, either wirelessly in the office or by plugging directly into the network, let's say. What can help with everybody is 802.1x enforcement. Now that relies on your underlying network infrastructure, your routers, your switches, stuff like that. No matter who connects and no matter how they connect, those switches are going to say, look, before you get in, I'm going to have to go talk to the network policy server and see if you're healthy. 
If you're not up to speed, I'm going to let you in, but only to the restricted network. I'm not even going to make the electrical connection to the rest of the network to let you in. Now, that obviously requires that your network infrastructure components support the 8021X protocol, which most newer components should certainly do. The last technique is IPsec. Now, this requires a lot more stuff. On one or more servers, you need to have a combination of an AD domain controller, the health registration authority, which requires IIS, that's a Windows server role, NPS, the network policy server, and you also need a certification authority. Now, this can either be Active Directory Certificate Services, or it can be any third-party CA that supports the Microsoft Windows Client Certificate Enrollment Protocol. So <laughs> once you've got all those pieces, the way this essentially works is when a client tries to get on the network, they have to first acquire an IPsec certificate. Now, if they're healthy, they get a certificate. If they're not healthy, they don't get a certificate. Rather than specifically setting aside a remediation network, you simply designate which resources are willing to talk to someone who doesn't have a certificate. Windows Update might be willing to talk to someone without a certificate, for example, while your, your file servers might require someone that has a certificate. So if you're healthy, you get a clean bill of health, and then every resource you talk to is going to ask to see that clean bill of health before it will talk to you. Unless, of course, it's a resource that you've configured to just not care. So the IPsec piece runs over your existing infrastructure, and it's definitely a little bit more complicated to set up, but totally provides complete coverage. Now, all of this requires that your client computers, or servers too, whatever computers are going to be on your network, are NAP capable. Typically speaking, you're talking about XP Service Pack 3 and later, and on the server side, it's usually like Server 2008 and later. Those are the machines that can run the NAP client piece, the network policy piece that reports the health to the network policy server. I hope this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.